Being a YouTuber isn't easy. A lot of people will mock internet personalities for the amount of needless whining that many of them, particularly at the top of the pyramid, tend to display on their channels. <laughs> But the fact of the matter is, YouTube has become increasingly accessible to the public and led a lot of people to work towards that goal of being a full-time internet star. This accessibility has also made it increasingly difficult to stand out amongst your peers, as well as made drama a part of online culture. Avoiding controversy and managing to come out on the other side in one piece isn't always easy. A lot of people handle it pretty poorly, in fact. But through thick and thin, a few people manage to ascend to the highest echelon of the YouTube community and become bona fide gods. The tale of Zaptai is one of a man who had the chance to become one of the most popular people in the YouTube community. A cameo in a Leafy is Here video, an entire guest spot on Pyrocynical's channel, a collaboration in the works with I Hit Everything, and friendships with those who would go on to accumulate millions of followers. It's also about how as fast as his opportunity was here, it was gone, and how the narrative surrounding his departure was almost completely false. This is the tragedy of Zaptai. <laughs> This website was a lot different just a few years ago. So many people have come and gone by now that it can be hard to keep track of just where each person's story begins and ends. But the story of Zaptai certainly begins with the commentary community at its peak on YouTube. Commentary YouTube was much different in 2016 when compared to what it is now. It wasn't populated by former Viners with nice cameras and people who treat their channels like businesses. Instead, at the helm of each one of these titans was a greasy kid with a $50 microphone, Counter-Strike gameplay, and an appetite for views. Drama was happening left and right, people were being exposed for unscrupulous, scummy, deceitful behavior. The careers of most of these people were either made by drama or broken by it. In many cases, both. You can only expose for so long before the audience turns its ever watchful gaze to he who commands thine unwashed masses. Eventually, everyone would be exposed, 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 exposed. Amidst all of this vitriolic, toxic, biohazardous mess, a few creators strive to make something that went a step above your average. Today, today we're gonna be exposing Keemstar, okay? Guys, Keemstar said no. But none of these creators were nearly as popular as Leafy, Pyrocynical, Nefuckers, Mimulus, or any of the other large gameplay channels that dominated the scene from 2015 to 2016. They were at the top of the cast system, and everyone else was way down at the bottom. The filth. <laughs> Many of these creators have had their names lost to time, swept up in the ever-changing paths of life. Creators like Ty HD and Trustring have been missing in action for the past four years. Others, like Mama Max, have stopped making commentary videos altogether, shifting their focus to less irradiated pastures with less gameplay and much less ear rape. It was out of this pit of bottom-of-the-barrel nobodies, of people posting videos alone with nobody commenting and nobody watching, that the subject of this video was born. Hey everyone, I'm Zaptai, and I'm going to be filling in for Pyro today. Don't really see a point in giving any further ado, so let's just get right into it. Zaptai's story actually begins with another channel under a completely different name, titled Not A Hipster. Here, he uploaded movie review videos, something that would be echoed in his content a year later or so. While his early videos employed the use of gameplay, they were always scripted and weren't throwaways. From time to time, he would talk about trending subjects, but he tended to take a more broad approach to discussing these topics, often making videos where he covered a subject in depth, instead of limiting it to a one creator video that would only be relevant or watchable for a few weeks after its release. Eventually, he would evolve this more common approach to his visuals in exchange for character stills of his profile picture, a cartoon teddy bear, accompanied by simple but effective editing. His level-headed approach to creating this content afforded him a pretty humble audience, which seemed to appreciate what he made and gave him pretty high praise at the time. Colossal was crazy, made a great video going far more in depth than all the allegations and incidents in that time frame, so I'll include a link to that in the description, and I'd highly recommend watching that before continuing here. I realize that another person covering this guy so efficiently might seem to void the point of this video, but unfortunately, Colossal didn't have access to Lion Maker's most recent clickbaity grasp at straws at the time, as it was posted weeks after his video. So, I'm gonna do it. It wasn't hard to tell that he took inspiration from fellow YouTubers Colossal is Crazy and I Hate Everything, two people who uploaded less but posted quality content more, the former of which it seems Colossal is still pretty keen on doing. <laughs> It wasn't long before he started making some connections in the community, stating in an interview that he felt like he was really starting to succeed when creators who he had been admiring from a distance began to take notice of his uploads and appreciated them. But like there were a handful of YouTubers that I've watched for 
anywhere between several months to several years mm -hmm. that started subscribing to me or following me and then really? we would start chatting. And it was when like that playing field got evened that I started being like, okay, so there's something here. He would really hit his stride in popularity when Pyrocynical allowed him and several other creators to upload onto his channel while he was away, giving Zaptai the opportunity to post his own So Bad It's Good video to his channel. Pyro would also promote Zaptai in other videos, telling people to check out his work and explaining that he was good pals with the guy. Now what I'm gonna do is I'll leave you with a video that my good friend Zaptai made summarizing the whole situation. These shoutouts earned him a subscriber boost of more than 50,000 in a single month. And to anyone with half a brain, it was clear that his spiral was projected to be anywhere but down. One of the most prominent venues that Zap posted content to was his podcast titled Hot Hosted by Elvis the Alien, Bionic Pig, and Ed, the three used this podcast as a way to discuss current events in the YouTube community. This show included guests like Colossal is Crazy, I Hate Everything, Chris Raygun, Heemstar, Bunty King, Lieutenant Corbus, and other people who at the time were heralded as some of the most popular people on this side of the platform. He even managed to star in a Leafy is Here video, taking part in his final of the infamous Keemstar rant videos, using his knowledge as a law student to claim that Leafy could take Keemstar to court. While Keem certainly hasn't been afraid to throw this word around at claims made about him, he doesn't seem to understand how to refrain from doing it himself. Despite his appearance here, Ed would state in another video that he was not a fan of Leafy's videos, to say the least. I would discuss my opinion on Leafy's content here, but frankly, I wouldn't be able to make any new points, so we'll keep it simple and say that I find his videos to be absolutely abysmal. Zaptai would keep his identity a secret until he accidentally revealed his face on a Bionic Pig livestream, which he would later talk about in a video he made about face reveals. Alright, it's done now, okay? You don't have to bother me anymore, you know what I look like. In one short year, Zaptai had gone from someone with no following and no friends, to someone who was frequently hanging out with the most popular guys in the room and making thousands of dollars a month from his content. He dropped out of law school to pursue YouTube full-time, and had a collaboration video planned with I Hate Everything to further his movie-related content. To most people, it was obvious that he was a rising star and was guaranteed to be over 1 million subscribers as long as he kept on creating content. He had the world inches away from his fingertips until it all slipped away. If you guys couldn't tell by the title, it's probably gonna be like the last episode or something, but the podcast is over. On February 2nd, 2017, The End was uploaded to the Hot Wet Soup YouTube channel. The usual character art and Twitter links were missing, replaced instead by the multicolored gradient background that they usually use. In Zaptai's place was I'm Alex, who claimed to be his best friend online and someone who Ed had confided in over the past few months. In this hour-long show, he was accused of being a sociopath, supposedly by his own admission. Ed told me uh, uh, about four or five days ago now that he was a diagnosed sociopath. Uh, that's what it told me. Now, obviously, if you don't know what a sociopath is, he, the basics are he just can't feel human emotion. All three members expressed a great frustration with Ed and the lack of communication that he had given them, often coming across as very distant. They all felt as though he had been manipulating them over the past few months and using them for views, and they explained that they did not want to make the episode, but they felt that they had to in order to protect other people from being hurt by him. They also said that he had cheated on his girlfriend with multiple girls online, talking to female fans of his with the intent of sleeping with them. He's been cheating on multiple girls, uh, I think it's four specifically. Uh, it's obviously the one who you may have seen if you've been following Twitter posts, you would know. Um, did publicly tweet that Ed had cheated on her and that she was done and, and, and she regretted it. And honestly, like, she just needs your support more than anybody, more than us, really. The same day that the episode was released, Zaptai tweeted out saying, Make of it what you will. The vagueness of this tweet would be followed up a few days later with a twit longer, where he expressed that he didn't feel like his friends had done anything wrong with releasing the episode, but that there was a lot of speculation around the situation and assumptions about him that he felt were very inaccurate. I encourage everyone to listen to the entirety of the podcast. I feel like a lot of people have listened to the first 10 minutes and just figured it was all shit talk, which isn't the case. I tweeted, make of it what you will, not to introduce doubt in anyone's minds, but to suggest that you should make of me what you will after listening and learning. Something I've always talked about in my videos is not to generalize or jump to conclusions. I'm seeing a lot of that. 
stop that. The general impression in the community was that the situation was very poorly handled, with multiple people being very critical of how it was released and saying that it was very irresponsible for I'm Alex and his friends to label Ed as a sociopath without any proof of it other than his word, which is third-hand knowledge at this point. On February 4th, two days after the release of the podcast, someone on Twitter with the handle at Seffers, going by the name Heather, posted on Twitter about how she, as a 16-year-old, had been engaged in sexual conversations with Ed online. Included with her statement was the release of the now infamous, ah, you're worth getting arrested for, in which it was believed that Ed was acknowledging that he was speaking to a 16-year-old girl, for the purpose of hooking up. Accusations of pedophilia soon began to fly, and within hours, Zaptai became known as the sociopath and pedo who cheated on his girlfriend, abused his friends, and sent nude pictures to underage girls. Heather was supported by creators like Deodor Anthony, a former friend of Ed who publicly condemned him, as well as I'm Alex, who went on multiple rampages on Twitter to point fingers at anyone who questioned the story around the situation. If you make a video about Ed, consider yourself done on this website. In response to Tommy C questioning the narrative and explaining that he didn't think what Ed had done was irredeemable, Alex tweeted this. Hey Tommy C, did you send your dick to underage girls too? Multiple would be even better. Keemstar tweeted about the situation as well, even discussing it briefly during an episode of drama alert for lying cheating on girls and last night it dropped that he was trying to hook up with a 16 year old girl the same day that the drama alert was released heather put out a twit longer about the situation to clarify her take on it she also called him a pedo in a tweet from the previous day i was 16 at the time of the situation happening and ed was 20 we started talking late september around the same time he was dating three other girls he manipulated me into sending nudes what people don't understand is they're not nudes. They're just revealing and sexually explicit. Zaptai was trending on Twitter on February 4th, and everyone was pitching in to give their two cents. The ages of the girls as well as how many he was talking to became ever-changing. The entire thing was a complete disaster in terms of how the information was handled. It was all over Reddit and Twitter, plenty of videos were posted about it to dissect the situation and criticize the people involved, and it seemed to have completely eclipsed the original reputation that Zaptai had in the first place. Now personally, I have mixed feelings about the video. I don't think that it was toned correctly, the information was poorly relayed, and the core of the message was damaged danced around with how they felt about the situation instead of what the audience really needed to know. That's why I think the video is getting the response that it is. Well, that mixed with a few of the tweets that came out after the fact, which we'll get into a bit later. Universal condemnation of him ensued from a lot of people, who were now convinced that Zap was a pedophile and a completely disgusting person. One of the only people defending him publicly was the infamous Keemstar himself, making tweets defending him and criticizing his friends, which he got a lot of crap for at the time. Popular commentator Pyrocynical also commented on the situation with a much more level-headed take on his subreddit, where he explained that he was very torn over what was going on and felt bad for the people involved. Zap has never wronged me in any way. I can't say the same for others, but for me personally, I was never manipulated or lied to in any way from what I'm aware of. I was never too happy with the idea of the stuff Zaptai supposedly did being made public, but I felt like I was involved so little in the situation, my say wasn't really valid. There are things that he's done that are fucked, but the tag sociopath is being thrown around way too much. The way I see it, you gotta judge the actions and not the tag. If people just removed the term sociopath and judge him like anyone else, there would be loads more clarity. The way people latch onto that label is mental. In a way, I feel sorry for both Zaptai and the people he supposedly wronged. The whole situation is a real mess, and it being made public has really opened up the floodgates. The state Twitter is in at the moment, I couldn't be more happy I'm suspended. While I can't say this for sure, I suspect that part of the reason that Pyro has become so detached from the rest of the commentary community since that situation, and hasn't spent much time doing collaborations with other people, is because of what occurred here. On February 13th, Ed put out a tweet longer to clarify a lot of what had gone on and respond to all of the allegations. He apologized for everything he had done, claimed that he wanted to be better as a person, and seemingly still had the intention of coming back to YouTube someday to make videos, hoping that people would be able to forgive him in due time. My actions aren't excusable, and the pain I caused is going to be difficult to undo. The one thing I really hope people can take from this beyond me is that not everyone's cry for help looks exactly the same. I've evidently been trying it for several months to no avail, and it finally came to a head with that massive lie. I guess I thought all the hurt I was causing would blow up in my face much earlier, and the fact that it didn't made the hit that much bigger. In a weird way, it was good, because it really forced me into a place where it was either take my own life or get help. 
and I chose the latter. Nothing was heard from him again until June of the same year, where he made a post on Reddit once again apologizing for what had happened, but saying that he was sick of being harassed and tracked down online. He said that upon finding out the age of one of the girls he was involved with was 13, he spent the night vomiting, and that he never would have knowingly talked to a girl that young. He ended it by claiming that he would never be coming back to YouTube and was trying to move on with his life. I'm not playing the pity card. I was in a shit spot. I already posted about that, but I've gotten considerable help and I'm working to better myself in every way I can. I've got two jobs, I'm moving out of my house shortly, and I'm pursuing other things. YouTube is over. Was talking to a 16 year old a fucked up thing to do? Yes, won't challenge that. But I didn't know she was 13, assuming that she actually is, and I would not have stooped to that point no matter how far gone I had been mentally. If you don't believe that, that's fine. I know YouTube operates under a guilty until proven innocent mindset. Zaptai is done. I'm just defeated by and tired of the whole situation at this point. So think of me what you will. Just don't track down my contact information to tell me about it. That was the last we heard of Zaptai for quite a while. Talk about his channel and the controversy around it would be brought up periodically in the community, and I'm Alex would talk about it briefly in interviews that he's done since then, but it was never unearthed in total. Ed made a brief return to YouTube on November 23rd, 2018, when he posted a video reviewing the Halloween movie series, in which he completely avoided the situation and attempted to move on from it. The video accumulated 40,000 views, and his fans seemed pretty pleased that he had returned. However, a little over a month later, he deleted the channel outright, and that's the last that he was heard from. To help you all understand just how negative the reputation of the Zaptai brand was, allow me to show you the response that people gave him around the time of his brief return. On his video, I left a comment initially saying that I was glad he was making content again, and I hope that he had learned from his mistakes. The response that I received on Twitter was pretty clear. Zaptai is not to be welcomed back into the community, and anyone who supports him is disgusting. Why are people welcoming back Zaptai? Like he's a fucking family member that came back from a vacation. I was heavily criticized for even enjoying his content, and people like Hyojin pretty quickly made tweets in response to the opinion that I had expressed. I can get away with murder and be welcomed back into a community with loving arms as long as I upload a banger video. Am I right, guys? Don't seek out these people to criticize them for their tweets. I only show them to illustrate just how negative the reputation around the Zaptai name had become. Even expressing that you enjoyed his content was enough for you to be human trash. But for months after the controversy was said and done, I felt really bad for Ed. I felt like he got a really raw deal, and he didn't deserve to have his future destroyed over what were flimsy accusations at best. But it seemed like for the longest time, everyone was willing to just take them as fact without any definitive evidence. I'm friends with the guy who runs the Zaptai Archive channel. He was someone who I would discuss this with pretty often, and we had often talked about how we had a pretty uneasy feeling about the entire thing, even planning to do the research to debunk the rather flimsy allegations altogether and try to redeem him. Recently, enough evidence has surfaced that I feel comfortable in saying that these accusations were completely false. So let's re-examine each of them individually. The first allegation from the podcast is that Zaptai is a diagnosed sociopath who was lying to all of his friends and using them for views. That he was a diagnosed sociopath. Uh, that's what it told me. Now, obviously, if you don't know what a sociopath is, he the basics are he just can't feel human emotion. Now, I'm no psychologist, and it's clear that none of the people here are either, because even the definition of a sociopath they cite here is clearly wrong. A sociopath, or someone diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder, is someone who has a mental health disorder characterized by disregard for other people. Those with antisocial personality disorder tend to lie, break laws, act impulsively, and lack regard for their own safety or the safety of others. In this definition, lifted directly from the DSM-5, nowhere does it say that the person suffering from it cannot experience human emotion. We can go ahead and throw their assumptions about this behavior out of the window because the diagnosis that he, according to I'm Alex, claimed to have doesn't even line up with the behavior that they describe. First of all, there's no blood test for this. It's a subjective opinion of a trained professional, and that's it. They don't call it sociopathy. They call it antisocial personality disorder, um, and it doesn't go like this. At the point of the podcast's initial release, VWQ made three videos about the subject where he had the opinion that Ed was not a sociopath and was instead depressed. According to VWQ, Zaptai was making a cry for help and exhibiting self-destructive behavior because of his depression. To me, it looks like a manifestation of Zaptai's depression. Zaptai has shown countless signs of depression in the past and exposing himself in this way could be his sort of cry for help. This would later be confirmed in a twit longer from Ed himself. I'm not a sociopath. Never have been. My exact wording was I was diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder, which turned into Ed's a diagnosed sociopath. 
There was no diagnosis and there was no therapist or doctor. As admitted, I was lying for months, saying anything I thought would make things better. The one thing I really hope people can take from this beyond me is that not everyone's cry for help looks exactly the same. I've evidently been trying it for several months to no avail, and it finally came to a head with that massive lie. I guess I thought all the hurt I was causing would blow up in my face much earlier, and the fact that it didn't made the hit that much bigger. The origin of the word sociopath being brought up is still unknown to this day, but uh, considering Alex's behavior since then, labeling people as things without sufficient proof, I have a sinking feeling that he may be the one responsible for interjecting the word sociopath into the conversation as a label for Ed's actions. So to conclude this accusation, I think it is safe to say that it was completely false. What happened, in the words of both Zaptai, Elvis the Alien, and Bionic Pig, is that Ed was displaying lots of self-destructive behavior due to his depression, one of these being pathological lying. Zaptai told I'm Alex that he had been diagnosed with ASPD as an excuse for all of the reckless behavior that he had been engaging in, including cheating on his girlfriend or e-cheating, as all of these relationships were online. He then further justified this lie by claiming that he was manipulating his friends' reviews and to grow his own brand, but when asked asked how or to give specific examples, he could not remember, as said by both Tommy C and I Hate Everything. Do you feel like he manipulated you, Alex? Because he said he manipulated me, I just don't know Still how trying he trying to figure out how, yeah. Yeah, I think so. How? <laughs> I think because he manipulated I, I, I most people that, I keep on hearing he told people that, right? He manipulated, and when asked, when asked, he was like, I don't remember, I don't know how. Well, that that's kind of the sign of somebody who's self-destructing. That's the sign of, that's behavior, that's self-destructive behavior. Where, as he put it, he committed, um, a, like, really, like, a, like public uh, relations suicide, in a sense. See, to me, if you can't yeah, name what you did to somebody, and, and obviously, you, Alex, you have situations where you know he lied to you. I think he just got caught with all the other lies and just... I'm the worst person on earth, and I'm going to give you a uh, a medical definition of why I'm the worst person on earth. That sounds like somebody who is self-destructing and needs help. <sighs> but like... This is because, of course, he was lying about this as well. Somewhere along the line, the term sociopath was brought into the mix, likely by someone doing a quick Google search of the term ASPD. And I Googled it, and I went... Well, how do I help you if you're a sociopath and he said it's not curable? And then everyone behind the scenes, particularly I'm Alex and Deodor Anthony, labeled him as a sociopath and began spreading this information to everyone else. Deodor Anthony, in particular, has gone on several Twitter rampages and frantically messaged people like VWQ and Tommy C, trying to justify the fact that Ed is a sociopath, but to no avail, as all of the evidence he had didn't add up to the point he was trying to prove. Um, Anthony had to convince me that Ed was bad. Mm -hmm. I've what I thought that's important. Yeah, but that's the problem. Because, Anthony didn't convince me yeah. of shit. In fact, he con no, convinced me um, of exactly the opposite. You know, all of this information is made public. Zaptai is called a sociopath in the public eye, and the rest is history. Or more accurately, the rest is Ed being labeled as something that he just is not. I'm gonna say that this accusation is, without a doubt, false. The allegation of pedophilia is easily the most serious one that was leveled at Ed. Keep in mind, not in the initial podcast itself. Alex did a terrible job of recounting exactly what happened in the podcast, hence the confusion around the situation. I don't think that it was toned correctly, the information was poorly relayed, and the core of the message was danced around with how they felt about the situation, instead of what the audience really needed to know. That's why I think the video is getting the response that it is. Well, that mixed with a few of the tweets that came out after the fact, which we'll get into a bit later. The initial allegation from the girl he was talking to online, Heather, was that she was 16 years old when Ed was 20, and that they had engaged in sexual conversations online. This now infamous screenshot served as the proof that Ed knew he was talking to a 16-year-old girl, an age that would later change to 13 years old in the months following. Um, because I only found out that Heather, who came forward and said she was 16, she calls him a pedophile on the twit longer she posts. She was 13. <sighs> Yeah. And, and I was like, okay, you're worth getting arrested for. She called him a pedophile. I'm pretty sure, especially after he called me up and said, oh, pedophile accusations, uh, defend me. This specific age is what led so many people to have a visceral reaction to his response and be so angry at anyone who would be okay with treating young girls like that in such a manner. It's also why so many memes have been created calling him a pedo. Everyone was very confident that he had talked to multiple underage girls in this manner. This much was stated in the podcast as well as in Heather's original accusation, where she herself called Ed a pedophile. 
There were three twitlongers posted by Heather in total from the information that I have gathered. One initial one where she called Ed a pedophile directly, a repost where she apparently omitted that line and perhaps changed other things about it, and a final twitlonger where she responded to some of the criticism that she had received on the first one. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find this original twitlonger archived anywhere. And according to I'm Alex, it was deleted shortly after it was released, and a different twitlonger was posted with that specific line taken out. However, she does mention it in her third post, which is proof enough to say that she did indeed accuse him of such. Posts. And we were in the court of her, and we went, what the fuck? Ed's still our friend. You can't just call him a pedophile for dating a 16-year-old. That's fucked. And she deleted it and then apologized, right? Yeah. Here she says this. First, I want to address that I do admit my faults of being a complete idiot for sending those images and calling Ed a pedophile. It was all the adrenaline and I was rushing things. I shouldn't have used the term pedophile because he's not. Second, a big confusion was that we exchanged images. Ed never sent any image of some sort. Only I did. In her second post, she said the following. I was 16 at the time of the situation happening and Ed was 20. We started talking late September, around the same time he was dating three other girls. He manipulated me into sending nudes. What people don't understand is that they're not nudes. They're just revealing and sexually explicit. What she failed to say in this twit longer is that she had lied in her Twitter bio about her age, having 17 years old in her bio. When we had our conversations, I gave him my Twitter and my bio had a fake age on it. 17. This is further reflected in a twit longer that Ed himself posted. So at most, from his own admission, we know that he was aware he was talking to a 16-year-old girl as a 20-year-old. We also know that while they did plan to meet up, he stopped talking to her altogether and blocked her on social media, according to this screenshot of a message from her. It would later come out that Heather was apparently lying to the entire community about her age and was actually 13 and not 16. There was no proof of this at the time, but most people seem to be pretty convinced that she was 13 years old. And many would also say that Ed knew her age all along. Are you that dense? Zaptai was dating a 13 year old girl. That's what he got outed for. Apparently I am that dense because all evidence points to Ed having no idea that she was younger than 16 years old. When you look at these photographs, do you see a man coercing a young woman into sending nudes? Or do you see a young woman acting flirty, leading him on, and happily sending photographs for her own ego needs? I love taking pictures for you and seeing your reaction. Oh, but the manipulation was very discreet because he's extremely smart. Now, I'm in no place to speculate on the legitimacy of this claim, but on the face of it, this could be construed is a convenient excuse. To me, it just looks like a mutually consensual thing. During some recent investigation into the case, Heather was actually reached out to about this and she was willing to respond and comment on the situation. So here we have her admitting that she lied about her age and that she was not 13 years old. This guy got catfished, plain and simple, and whoever was spreading the rumor that she was 13 years old was outright lying. Not to mention, the age of consent in the state where Heather resided, being Washington, is 16 years old, so it would have been completely legal for them to meet up and have sex. The general rule of thumb in these situations should be that if you can't get the guy arrested for it, then don't try to destroy his life over it. Now, is that age gap acceptable? That's up to you to decide. I personally would say that it is not okay, and parents should probably have been involved there to stop this girl from flaunting herself online to men who are a little too old for her. I also think that he probably deserves to be criticized for speaking to this girl whilst knowing that she was 16 years of age. But is it irredeemable? I would say no. When reaching out to Elvis the Alien for comment, he had this to say on the subject. I think he was a lonely person. He desperately wanted approval from women. Maybe he had difficulty with girls in his personal life. I'm not sure. I don't think he's a pedophile or a sociopath. I don't think he's a terrible guy. To conclude with an assessment of Zaptai's character, can we say that he is a good person? I'd say no, but I wouldn't call him a bad person either. It may come across as extremely cliche to say that we're all human, we all make mistakes, but in this situation, nothing that happened here was extremely out of the ordinary for young people struggling with depression, or young people in general. Cheating happens. It's not something that needs to be made public when someone is making YouTube videos. As he stated in his twit longer, all of his lying and self-destructive behavior was a cry for help because of the internal pain that he was experiencing. And critically, the main two accusations against him that were spread so far and wide, especially given the extreme lack of evidence around him, didn't need to be made public in the first place. A simple, the podcast is over, Ed is taking a break from the internet for personal reasons, no hard feelings towards him, but we're not going to be working together anymore, is all that needed to be said. Instead, the guy who had just dropped out of law school to pursue his YouTube career had everything ruined because he was catfished by an e-girl. He just made some really bad decisions and said some really stupid shit to the wrong person. I hope he gets therapy for whatever issues he has.
Ultimately, Zaptai's biggest mistake throughout all of this was that instead of addressing everything right off the bat in a video, which probably would have been able to dispel many of these rumors for him, he let people like I'm Alex take control of the narrative and destroy everything that he had worked to create, while simultaneously calling anyone questioning the narrative a predator. In an interview, he did seem to at least acknowledge that the entire situation had gone very poorly. Meanwhile, behind the scenes just a few months earlier, he was criticizing Pig and Elvis for not taking it seriously. Nah, you shouldn't either, because honestly, like, it doesn't help the fact that you're with people that don't particularly want to take it too seriously either, you know? Yeah, unfortunately, as proven by recent events. Exactly, so... Bring back, bring I mean, back, yeah. uh, bring back soup. old dead hot wet soup <laughs> podcast, please. In this clip, he attempts to pass the blame for what he did onto other people pressuring him into talking about it, despite the fact that he seems to be almost enthusiastic about sharing all of Ed's private info. Um, I get harassed by like everybody else, a bunch of girls and people to basically do something about it, right? Every DM, every day, every hour. Ed this, Ed that, Ed's your best friend. When are you going to tell these people? When are you going to tell that people? Then somebody called me up and basically said, I know Ed is this. I know Ed's done this. I know you know. Okay. So I'm like put in this situation where I'm like, are you fucking forcing me to say something? I failed to see in the twit longer where Ed admits to being a sociopath or a predator or sending a dick pic to underage girls. In fact, he seems to disagree with almost every assertion that you made about him, other than the fact that he has a lot of mental health issues, which he is trying to deal with in peace. This is something that unfortunately this year that uh, I've had to deal with incapacities as a YouTuber. As a guy who knows YouTubers, as a guy who's been involved with YouTubers around them, I've had to deal with parts of this and I spoke up about it and was punished severely by certain people. And before I really go in on Alex, let me say this. Initially, I didn't really think that he had acted maliciously in this situation. Two years ago, I would have blamed him for, mostly what seemed to be pure idiocy, destroying his friend's reputation and turning parts of the community against him. It could also be speculated that Alex was trying to distance himself from Ed in an attempt to save his own reputation, but this was a narrative that I discounted entirely at the time and gave Alex the benefit of the doubt. I didn't think that he was malicious, I just thought he was dumb. I even elected not to talk about this topic years ago in my original I'm Alex video, because I did not feel like it was my place. Well, things are different now. Since the Zaptai situation, Alex has implied that Tommy C is a predator, he outright called James Charles a predator, and he outright called Slazzo a predator. Slazzo was a close friend of Alex who lived with him just weeks before Alex publicly accused him of being a predator. Um, I don't believe he's innocent. I, I don't think he's innocent at all. Uh, che may not also be innocent and, and may have hid stuff and, and used jokes to try and maybe push a certain agenda. But at the same time, the stuff that Michael admitted to is stuff that makes me not want to be friends with somebody who is capable of doing those things, even the things he admitted to. Weeks later, after most of the damage had been done and a number of people, including myself, had railed on Alex in videos, he posted a twit longer apology about it where he seemed to at least somewhat own up to what had happened. But a few short months later, he went on a podcast and passed all of the blame for the situation off of himself to say that other people pressured him to speak about it. Oh, me mate got accused of some really terrible things and then, like, confronted him. He was like, no, 20 other full-time YouTubers went, if you don't go this way, we all think it's this way. Yeah. They go, you know, like, you've got to you've got to really join in on this side. Like, this is the way that it's, like, this is the way you think it's going to go. And Now, where have I heard that before? Every DM, every day, every hour. Ed this, Ed that. Ed's your best friend. If you enjoy Alex's content, then that is completely fine. It's not my cup of tea, but it doesn't really matter to me. But I would never, ever want this guy as a friend. When push comes to shove, time and time again, he is anything but a good one. Rather than stick by his friends or just, just keep his mouth shut about it, he calls his buddies predators publicly and becomes the most prominent speaker in one of these witch hunts every time they come around. Then he gives a half-assed apology a few weeks later and just hopes that everyone will forget about it. In the interest of covering all of my bases for this video, I reached out to I'm Alex for comment through a mutual of ours because I thought it would be good to get his side of the story all of these years later. I wanted to see if there was anything that I had missed. As of this video's release, I have been given no response. The most unfortunate thing about false accusations like this is that they never really go away or disappear. Nicholas DiOrio's videos about Zaptai have accumulated more than 200,000 views in total, more than twice the amount of subscribers that he originally had. But to this day, people think that Ed is a pedophile even though no one has seen accurate proof of such. What Ed said in his final Reddit post was absolutely correct. The Zaptai name has been tainted forever. Um, 
Those people are gone now. They don't make content. Thank fuck for that. It's been more than three years since Ed first disappeared, and more than a year and a half since he outright deleted his channel. So why do I care so much? Why does anyone care? Shouldn't we be at the point where we just let sleeping dogs lie? Clearly the people involved don't want the story to drag on more than it already has. Why can't I, why can't everyone just let go? It's because, well, I am Zaptai. Okay, not literally, but after being suspended on Twitter enough times, I realized I would have to go incognito mode and use some other name, and I decided to utilize Ed's namesake for this purpose. For the past few months, I've been getting replies from people saying things like, Aren't you that pedo that asked nudes to underage girls? Did Zaptai go homeless or ever get a job after being caught as being a pedo? Wasn't Zaptai a pedo or something? Y'all remember when I drew fan art for Zaptai like literally a week before he was outed as a pedo? I'm pretty sure Turkey Tom formerly went by the name Zaptai, who got kicked out of his social circle for being diagnosed as a sociopath and had a relationship with a minor at some point. He's just rebranded and hasn't changed his reactionary attitude. I'm not sure what reactionary attitude Zap had. I think that may be a misuse of that word, but I'll put how funny this tweet is aside to say that I don't blame people for thinking that I am Zaptai. To anyone who isn't already initiated on my history of being kicked off of Twitter, it's not obvious that we're two different people. I also can't blame them for having the impression that Ed is a horrible guy. The people handling the accusation did about as bad a job as they could have. It's crystal clear that most people wish it had gone much differently. More mistakes down the road, so. Yeah, yeah that, that whole situation, everybody handled it poorly on yeah. all ends. Like, I, I, I will admit. I'm not afraid to admit that I admire the guy a lot, not because of his personal life, but because of his videos. In the early days of my own channel, people like him, I Hate Everything, and Pyrocynical inspired the videos that I make now. If you watch his old videos, the stylistic similarities in editing and writing should be pretty apparent. His projects were a step above what most people in the community were releasing at the time, and for this reason he's become a bit of a folk hero to a lot of people. He was a young guy who had more potential than all of the people around him, and dropped out of law school to pursue his YouTube fashions full time. He set the bar high for the standard of quality, but ultimately, he was a victim of his own depression and inability to control himself, which is shown through all of his self-destructive behavior and apparently attempted suicide after all of the public fallout. Bionic Pig has since said that he never wanted to make the final episode of Hot Wet Soup in the first place. Elvis the Alien expressed a similar sentiment to me when I reached out to him to ask how he felt, but these three have not been created equal. Two of them have expressed remorse for what happened and said that they wish it had been handled differently. One of them went on to do it again and again. Was talking to a 16 year old girl a fucked up thing to do? Yes, I won't challenge that. But being threatened repeatedly, doxxed, having his future on this platform destroyed, called a predator, and having people call his job after the fact to try and get him fired is not justified. He was one of the most talented people in the community and made content that is, to this day, a massive step above anything that I'm Alex or many of the modern commentary contemporaries have gone on to create in an ocean of pointless, terrible drama videos that could be made in less than a day, he was making genuine efforts to create a product that would hold up in the present day. It's why I and so many other people have taken inspiration from his work. He represented something different than the all too common garbage that is pushed out by the YouTube machine. We're at the point where the entire mess has been untangled and I, I think we should all be willing to collectively give the guy a second chance if he chooses to take one. But as of now, he's never coming back. And who could blame him? With friends like these, who needs enemies?